just because the state legislature is not in session, they are still working hard to uh, address the concerns during coronavirus right now. And so joining me now is Senator Sharon Morawaki. Good to see you, Senator. Good to see you again, Annalisa. Mahalo for covering the COVID virus. And crisis. mahalo to you. Uh, you know, we are talking about the recent Senate COVID-19 committee meetings that you've been having. What is your sense of how the state is conducting testing right now? You know, if we had our judges, and the committee has been working hard since the end of February when the Ways and Means Committee chair found that we the state wasn't moving quick enough and seeing this as urgent as the committee is seeing it because we heard from our constituents, from all the public really concerned about this. So um, I'd say they have come um, a long way uh, since February, not as much as we would like to see. So we're still on them in terms of um, looking at the testing and the testing, there's some controversy as to whether it should, everybody should be tested, asymptomatic people uh, could be carriers and should be tested to, um, to uh, testing only those who are symptomatic that have a cough or fever uh, and have been exposed to somebody with, uh, with the virus. Um, I, th I, th I think from the, but this, what we're hearing, it really is doing as much testing as possible um, when they even have a fever. And that's why you see now the free COVID testing that's uh, the drive-through testing, because we really need to know, it's a public health crisis. We need to know how extensive is it in our community and try to contain it. And that's why the, the interventions that, that we've been pushing are like stay at home, uh, trying to keep the visitors out, um, uh, testing and following and contact tracing the people with positive, um, the positive uh, cases, and making sure that anybody they've touched gets tested and quarantined so that we don't see this mass contagion like New York. Um, we can contain it um, in an island state like ours. Mm -hmm. So it's really important. I was going to ask, you're in a unique position because you represent the most populated areas, Waikiki, Ala Moana, Kaka'ako. These are huge tourist destinations, and we're still continuing to see people outside gathering in groups on the beaches. How do you actually enforce what you're saying, the quarantine, the social distancing, when we're still seeing that happen out there? And this is, this is uh, why... Um, I tell my constituents, you really need to take this seriously. This is a public health issue. And you, then the best way to do it is to stay at home, shelter in place, go out only when you need to uh, for medications or for your food. But when you do, mask up, stay six feet away, and constantly wash your hands because that virus lives on and it looks for, and why you mask up is that not only for yourself, but for if you have a cough or you're carrying, you're not spreading it to your neighbors. And, and so you're being considerate and caring for other people. But that virus goes through, through to the mucus. So it will go through your eyes, your nose, your mouth. And that's why the mask and covering yourself when you go out is so important. Uh, and uh, I think people have to see the urgency of this, the importance of this, that we all can do our share each of us by really considering that and, and acting on it. So yes, in the beaches and, and people, you know, my district are want to jog, they want to walk, they want to get out there because uh, they're used to doing that. And we have a lot of the visitors which, which still are coming in, which to our chagrin, but they need to also see that they are here with us and should be considerate of us and they should quarantine. We did, we did, where we were able to push um, the Department of Transportation to to keep um, tourists out. If they don't have a place to stay, they should not be coming in. And and some have and and you see the visitor count is still like a hundred or so. We can only we wanted to admit only only residents. But of the people who have been admitted, we are asking that they be self quarantined for 14 days. So if you're a visitor, you have to stay in your hotel room for 14 days. If now the police are actually going out and you would get um, 
a, a fine of up to $5,000 or a year in jail if you um, are seen violating any of the, the orders that have been issued, which is self-quarantine, which is mm -hmm. stay off the beaches. Uh, you can go on the beaches up to the high water mark. That is the wet part of the sand. And you can go through the beach and traverse to get from, from your the higher water mark to the ocean to swim and get your exercise that way, swim, surf, whatever. But it's really important that we all follow these rules carefully and seriously. I also wanted to ask you about the economic impact of all of this. You know, we're hearing from residents who need unemployment insurance and can't get it, we rent relief, landlords, you know, not giving enough uh, help for people that aren't getting money in to pay for their rent and their food. So what is the Senate doing to address those concerns? We have been, we have been uh, urging the departments to help, for example, unemployment insurance. They had, uh, since COVID, they've had over 200,000 filings. And, and so their system is crashing, of course, because it's not used to that. They were having like 10,000 at max. Um, so, so um, they have been trying really hard. We've been trying to move people from other departments that are not essential workers to help them so that, that we, we can get more staffing because we know people are hurting out there. They need to pay their rent or mortgage. They need to buy food and so on. So we are pushing them and helping them as much we, as we can from the Senate uh, to make sure that, that they can get better staffed and get their computers working so that we can get these checks out to people. I, happy to report that some of the people already are receiving checks, but not enough. But again, um, we're moving, trying to move them next week to really expand their, their um, staffing and services. Uh, we know people are hurting. We are pushing for getting more unemployment checks out faster. Um, the, the, in terms of the tourist industry, that's a big part of my district. Waikiki, Kaka'ako areas, and we've seen a lot of the restaurants have closed, um, uh, the commercial enterprises have closed, uh, and, and of course the hotels. The hotels are, are using their workers in, in innovative ways, and they're using their hotel rooms in innovative ways, the uh, hotels for heroes, uh, for the, the first line workers. Um, and, and the federal relief um, that's coming down is really going to help the small businesses. Uh, it is, we, we talked to the Small Business Administration, that's somebody you might want to talk to, um, Jane Sawyers is District Director for Hawaii. Uh, they're trying to pull down that money fast enough to help small businesses in the state and also um, um, working with um, uh, landlords and tenants to make sure that there could be some relief uh, at least defer the rents uh, for renters uh, to help out. And, and homeowners and, and, uh, can be helped with their mortgages uh, so that they can, it can enable them to do that. So the federal relief is there. It's just a matter of the timing and how fast they can move. And you, you're talking about big bureaucracies, the federal government, the state government. So we're trying our best to urge them to to uh, use the governor's proclamation uh, as an emergency situation to be able to move some of those um, departments and their processes faster. Mm -hmm. to serve and I guess just in general, uh, Senator, what can be done? What do you think is um, not being handled well enough? You know, you mentioned bureaucracy, but if you had an ask from the governor, what would it be? I think it would be move all the departments, urge all the departments, and actually direct all the departments to, to work collaboratively among themselves and with the people and serve their mission, whether it's uh, the, the unemployment insurance. And they are working hard. It's just that they need to be, I guess, unleashed to, <laughs> to act much more collaboratively to get the, the mission done uh, and be more successful in doing what has to be done to serve our public. Uh, and they are working, but, you know, again, faster. And, and from General Hara, who is our incident commander, to the governor, the two of them working with Department of Health director, really being able to help get the, the, uh, the services out to our people. 
Mm-hmm. Very important uh, to remind everyone that we're all working together to get things Correct. done. Correct, so. yes. yes. Thank you so much, uh, Senator Sharon Morwaki, for joining us today and sharing it. I know the meetings are ongoing over yeah, at we the have Senate. Meetings, uh, all week, oh, not all weeks, three days next week, um, and they continue. And they can go to the Senate uh, Senate a COVID uh, page, and they can see all the work that this committee has done uh, from unemployment insurance to the release of prisoners. Uh, we talked about that yesterday. Um, Judge Foley's uh, report is that um, uh, there will be no mass release of prisoners, that it will come down to the sentencing judge looking at each case that came before them to see whether that prisoner should be released or not. So it's a much more measured, thoughtful release process. Yeah, I know a lot of people were concerned yeah. about that. We'll definitely be covering also that. Be yeah, the prisons, the idea is that the prisons were overcrowded. So some way in which we handle it, and we heard from uh, the uh, prisons uh, de- department head, um, Espinda, saying that a hundred of the prisoners would move to the federal detention um, uh, facility. So there are other ways to skin this cat to make sure that prisoners inside and the staff are ca- cared for, as well as the community and its public health and safety. 